with me, Paul Hampton, who's the Director of Product Marketing, and also Joe van der Graaff, who works in uh, sales in the US, who answers the, what's the difference between Alfresco Labs and Alfresco Enterprise day in, day out. So, what we found interesting when we started the company is if you've worked at a Documentum or a Farnet or a Siebel or an Oracle in the enterprise software industry, really that the business models and the licensing models and the support models are very, very similar between different companies. And when we started Alfresco, we were very lucky to be able to talk to some of the leading open source companies such as Red Hat and JBoss, MySQL and Sugar, really to look at the kind of the business model they had, the licensing model they had, and the support models they had. And what was interesting, there was no common cookie-cutter approach to creating an open source uh, company. So we spent a lot of time, and it's probably one of the hardest things we've done, to create a business model and a licensing model and a support model that is really fair for our community, our customers, and allows us to create a successful business. So what I'd like to really talk about today is the, the, the business model behind Alfresco and the comparison between Alfresco Labs and Alfresco Enterprise. It's one of the most common questions that we get asked for. So the way I'd like to structure today's presentation is to really look at really our goals, and that's, that's a very important thing to review because the business model has to support our goals, and that really reflects everything that we do. Um, look at different open source business models and look at the approaches that we've taken, and we've con continually tried to evolve, and we've continually tried to listen to both our customers and our community as well. And then talk about our business model and how our focus upon building a stronger open source product. And John Newton uh, wrote a blog when we announced 3.1, really going through the principles we have behind the product and behind the company and behind our business model. Then we really look at the top 10 questions that we typically get around the differences between labs and enterprise and what particular parts of enterprise, what does it mean? What does uh, the network mean, for example, or what is a subscription? And to look at what that means. Then look at some useful resources, and then, as we always do, be open to questions at the end. So please um, feel free to put questions in the chat throughout the presentation, and we'll do our best to answer those at the end of the presentation. And Balaji will, again, ask those questions, and we'll answer them. So one of the really important things to say, which really influences everything else we're saying in the presentation, is when we started the company, the whole goal of Alfresco was not to produce a very, very expensive niche-based system. It was to become the most ubiquitous, most commonly, widely, globally used ECM system in the world. And that's very important because that means we want to have a successful labs product and a successful enterprise product. And we really want to be able to differentiate ourselves to products like SharePoint so that people can you know, use us as easily as SharePoint and as ubiquitously and anywhere in the world. And I mentioned that is what we want to be able to do as well as being ubiquitous is allow people to have a choice of the stack they use. So they should be able to use Linux or Windows, MySQL or Oracle, um, Tomcat, JBoss, DEA or WebSphere, Microsoft Office or OpenOffice, Firefox or IE, really to give people a choice of the stack that they want and not tie people into one specific Alfresco stack or, or proprietary stack to give people a choice of service level agreements. They may want to have no service level agreements at all, or they may want to have a service level agreement via just you know, business hours, or 24 hours a day, five days a week, or, or seven days a week. So they can choose the service level agreement they need for the application they have for their business, and to have fair pricing. One of the really, and that's very simple to say is one slide, one, one line on a slide, but what we don't have is armies of enterprise salespeople to explain the pricing. So it has to be very simple, and people agree that it's basically fair. And we'll look at some of those principles around that. And there's a separate webinar on that if people want to look at that again. And our, our initial goal was that if you want to have a supported enterprise class ECM system, we want to have a goal of it being a tenth of the cost of traditional players like Document and file open text, um, interwoven and vignette. So that's really where we are coming from. So if we think about those goals, it's very important for us to get ubiquity that we want to have a successful labs product and a successful enterprise product. And if you look at people that have a good experience with that, 
Um, some people may start with Alfresco Labs, and for the service level agreement they need, if they're running a simple uh, application, they may stay with Labs and be successful with Labs. Um, some people may stay with Labs, and then they'll successfully install it, develop on it, put it into a pilot, and then when they go into production, then they may want to move to enterprise. Some people may start with an enterprise trial initially, then go through, do a successful enterprise trial, a pilot, and then take the enterprise subscription. The whole model is about volume. The more people that use it, the more people that get successfully installed, the more people that do a successful um, deployment of it and successful application development, the more people will take into production, the more people that will want an enterprise subscription. That's the fundamental business model about volume. So again, the whole goal here is to have success in both streams here, and sometimes people may go from one to the other, from a labs to enterprise, or some people may start with enterprise, or some people may stay with labs. And the key thing here is why would you go to enterprise is that um, if you have an enterprise subscription, we can save you time, and that there will be um, experts to help you get up and running and productive more quickly. Uh, we'll be able to ship bugs to you and bug fixes to you more quickly. Um, it saves you staff, so you don't have to have people to know the code and fix it. And ultimately, it saves you a significant amount of money. And the other key thing is it's insurance. So when something goes wrong, the experts that wrote the product are here to support you, um, ship you a patch, ship you a fix, and give you maintenance upgrades to give you what you've come to expect um, with enterprise class products. So that's really where we were coming from. And we, we really looked and we continually look and continually try to evolve at various business models. So if you look